Welcome back, guys. Um, we're here Thursday morning. We're going to now get into uh, the workout. We want to start off as usual with our announcement. Look for the equipment loaner log that will be released tomorrow. So more details are going to be coming up. I'll talk about that a little bit more on the outro. Um, but that blog will be posted tomorrow. So check uh, tomorrow morning and contact me guys about that to set up a time to start picking up some equipment and go um, getting more details about that. Okay. Um, last thing I want to talk about, if you watched the uh, outro last night or if you missed it, I just want to reemphasize about the YAS Train programming. Make sure you're understanding what the programming is supposed to be delivering. It's not about doing it all or whatever your goals are. If your goals are just to do an hour's worth of work and you're finding that the outside the box programming is not giving you that hour, add that extra component. What's that extra component? Maybe it's conditioning for yourself. Maybe you have that equipment or now that we're gonna be loaning out some equipment, you'll be able to do some of those extra components. So start thinking about that. If you have questions on how you should program it for yourself, get a hold of us, let us guide you to so your doing as much as you want um, in the uh, with the YAS training program. Okay, I'm gonna pass it over to Jess here. She's gonna explain the workout for today. Hey guys, happy Thursday. We are back with another AMRAP for you, AMRAP 20. So a little bit of a longer workout today. Really, really fun one. Starting first with five handstand push-ups, moving into 10 bent over rows, and then 15 air squats. Before we get into any of the specifics, I want you to start thinking already. This workout is supposed to be paced much like Cindy. So uh, prepare yourself for something where you're gonna be getting at least 15 rounds of this workout. And as we talk about scaling options, figure out what scaling option is gonna allow you to hit that kind of volume. So for the five handstand push-ups in our first movement, you're gonna do handstand push-ups. If you can do five unbroken handstand push-ups for that like seven to 10 round range, maybe breaking it up into a quick three, two towards the end. If that's not gonna be an option for you, move on to a different progression. Um, we don't want to hit singles at any point in this workout. So um, jump down into one of the options we're going to go um, over in the demo. 10 bent over rows is your next movement. Again, picking something where you can do all 10 of those reps in a row, getting creative with your odd objects at home, whatever you have to add a little bit of resistance to that row, and then hitting the 15 air squat. This is going to be the piece that brings the heart rate up as much as you can, or uh, um, the most in the workout. So try to keep those unbroken as much as you can. Let your heart rate get going, and then maybe you'll get a little bit of a chance to breathe and you get back to that handstand. Okay, have fun guys. Okay, now for the after burner. With today's after burner, it's more of your mobility, your recovery. Um, you might be feeling the push-ups from Tuesday still. Um, if not, maybe the handstand push-ups might get you guys. That the first stretch here, or the first mobility drill is that sleeper stretch for that capsule. We'll go over that later on. Um, but again, it's to emphasize the recovery of your shoulders. Then the second component drill here is more of an activation to help you pull the shoulders back. Um, so this is a good drill here to do constantly if you are constantly fighting your shoulder positioning, which will help you with that recovery. But more to come in uh, later on in the afterburn, guys. Have fun with the warm up. Post your score. Okay, everybody. So for today's warm up, we kind of have two parts of the warm up today. Uh, the first part is more about working on our uh, joint mobility, so we're working on moving our joints around for today. Uh, the first joint we're going to talk about is your spine, so we're going to start in that quadruped position, so we're on our hands and knees here, and we're going into some cat cows. So the first thing Jess is doing here, she's arching her back, including her head and neck, so she's looking forward, and then she's going to try to round her back, and she's going to get into the cow, uh, cat position, and then she's going to go back into the cow position, Notice as she goes from one section to the other, she's trying to move along her entire spine. So it's not just moving your lower back, but she's trying to move the entire spine from the upper back to all the way down to that lower back. So we're gonna go for nine of those. Go slow and controlled here, guys. We're just trying to work on that joint mobility here. Once we're done nine of those, you can come back up to your feet here, Jess. We're gonna go for some standing camshaft circles. So this is working the shoulder blades, the scap retraction position here into the extension. So if you want to face the red wall for us here, Jess, notice how Jess is going in nice and slow. 
low circles here. She's really focusing on the scat. So we want to try to keep your elbow nice and locked out here. We're trying to keep the arm parallel to the floor for this position. And just nice and slowly she's going for three clockwise and then three counterclockwise positions. Notice in some sections of this circle, Jess is starting to shake a little bit. When that starts to happen, I want you to slow down that quadrant. So if you're finding in the front, it's starting to shake a little bit, slow it down. Try to get some more control out of it. If you point your finger forward and someone asks you which way is the beach, this is the new way of saying it is that way. All right, next, we are going into some arm rotations. Lots of you guys have been using one in our classes to warm up those shoulders. Um, these are really good if you have a wall that you can use. So Jess is actually going to get into that wall and so she's going to start off just slightly away from the wall. You can use the wall, you can drag your hand. Notice how she's going for a circle around that wall and then she's going to rotate her wrist so now the hand is flat against that wall. Rotate all the way around and then that thumb will now go back the other way. We're gonna go for three one way and then three the other way. Notice here also, she's trying not to rotate her upper body. So her hips aren't shifting, her upper body's not shifting. She's just focusing on that shoulder joint. So we're gonna do three one way, three the other way, her arm. After we're done that guys, we're gonna start getting into some of the movements that are a little bit more to get you moving, to get you warmed up here. So we're doing two rounds of, the first movement is 60 seconds of step ups. So we're gonna alternate legs on these step ups. This is a warm up movement here guys, so we don't want you to stop moving here. If you wanna add a little bit of speed to it, you can. Just try to get that heart rate up a little bit, try to get that cardio going during this movement, get those legs nice and warm. Once you're done 60 seconds of the step ups, we're gonna go for 15 air squats. So one five, not five oh. So notice Jess is just coming down, nice and slow and controlled. She's trying to feel out how it feels like. When you're doing these in the warm up, guys, if you want to stop even at the bottom of the squat for the first couple reps, just kind of feel it out, shake it out, go left to right a little bit. See how that squat is feeling that day? That is a really great option. After all, we're just warming up. The next movement in the warm up is T spine raises. We're going to do this while lying down on the ground. So we're going to start off just head and neck in a neutral position. So Jess is actually doing a little bit of a chin tuck here to get her head away from the ground, keeping that spine neutral. Hands are out into a T position and then she's going to bring those hands up as high as she can in the air, pause for a second here at the top and then come down with control. Try to keep the elbows nice and locked out here. When you get to the top of that T spine raise, you're going to feel those shoulder blades tensioning up, you're going to feel the muscles be the shoulder blades tensioning up and we also want you to feel it through your lats as well so you're just flexing that whole upper back in that final position finally guys we have five dive bomber or handstand push-up progressions to work with here but the focus today is just the descent so we're going to do a really slow descent Jess is in the dive bomber position here there will be more information on how to scale a dive bomber in the wad as we go through the demo of the wad. Notice how Jess took a break. So it took her about five or so seconds to come down all the way till she gets to the bottom to the range of motion. And then she's taking a break. You can shake your shoulders out if you have to at that point. Take a breath. The main focus is the weight down here. So if you guys feel comfortable with your handstand push-ups, you can also load yourself up into a wall. And same thing, you're controlling your descent. So Jess is nice and slowly controlling her descent down from that wall till her head touches the floor and then she's going to come off the wall, shake the shoulders out, load back up into your next dive bomber, keeping nice tension through the core as always, controlling that descent and coming down. So you're going to do five of those. All the movements I just mentioned you're doing two rounds of. We're going to go over more handstand progressions and dive bombers in today's workout demo. See you then. Okay, let's get ready here for this workout. We're gonna start off with that um, handstand push-up progression, starting with, if you're not comfortable with push-up, if you're not comfortable with dive bomber or that handstand push-up, we're gonna get you guys progressing it by taking a seat and grabbing objects to press overhead in the seated position. 
positions. You want to think about a nice posture, so big chest. As you press, try to fully extend those arms coming back down. Be mindful of your elbow position. Okay. Now, Yash is going to show you here from the front. Again, I mentioned be mindful of the elbows. Don't let them flare out too much. Try to keep them somewhat tucked in to torque your shoulders to help you activate your lats in those presses. Okay? That's your first progression. Progression number two, going into the dive bomber in that tripod position. So, feet a little wider than your hips, hands, shoulder width apart. From here, you're going to start by leaning forward and then bending those elbows to help you tuck those uh, knees inward. Then you're gonna press up using your tired hands going back down again. Now, we're gonna get Yash to show you here one bad one with his elbows flaring out. Avoid that, letting the elbows flare out. Keep them tucked in when you press up. The other mistake here is going straight down. Make sure you're not going straight down. That puts a lot of strain on the interior delts. Always lean forward so you should be touching the ground in front of your fingertips on the dive bomber, okay? Last progression going into your handstand itself. So going up, for those that are comfortable keeping, you can keep it, but you want to control it down if you need to put on uh, an object. You can roll a couple towels, place a book, towel on top of it to help you with that handstand push-up to minimize that range of motion, okay? So again, pick the progression that allows you to stay steady for the five push-ups that are in today's workout. From there, we're gonna go into the bent over row. I know, we know some of you guys have bands at home. Feel free to use your band. Feel free to use a pain can as we demonstrated. If you're using a band or you have kettlebells or whatever your object is, you're gonna lean forward, hinge at your hips, flat back. As you push, as you pull your object up, Keep those elbows tucked in to make sure you're activating your back muscles and not getting to the front of the shoulders too much. Again, you're retracting just like the camshaft that we showed you, depressing your scap as you drive your elbows up in your bent over row. Okay? You're doing 10 of those. Again, you should be able to do 10 in a row. Maybe it's not fast. Maybe it's just steady, but you should be able to still do the 10 in a row. Last movement is your squat, guys. Just a couple little things here to note. Make sure you're going down below parallel. You're not rounding your back. You're going up and down, pushing through those heels, making and making sure you're not going onto your toes. So 15 air squats in today's workout. Have fun with it. Try to hit 15 rounds today in the 20 minutes. Okay guys, here we are for the afterburner today. We are going over some shoulder stretches and mobility to get you guys uh, working for you after doing all those handstand push-ups today. Um, so the first one we're gonna go over is called the sleeper stretch. So we're gonna do this one two times per side and you're doing a 30 second hold. So you're just gonna stack your shoulders over each other and you're gonna think about uh, lying down on the ground getting your hand up in the air, and then you're just gonna rotate that hand down towards the floor. With my other hand, I'm actually gonna help assist pushing that hand down towards the floor more. And then with the arm that I'm stretching, I'm actually thinking of resisting my hand. So I'm pushing my hands kind of into each other. And I'm gonna hold that for about 30 seconds. Notice as you go here, guys, you might be able to actually get your hand down a little bit lower, readjust, and then again, I'm pushing both my hands into each other feeling a nice stretch into that shoulder. So you're gonna do that 30 seconds per side, and then for two rounds. Once you're done that, we're gonna go for uh, three sets of five scap rotations. So you can grab yourself a weight. You don't need much weight here, guys, so this uh, can of Lysol wipes would be probably just the right amount. And I'm gonna start off in that same position. So I'm gonna stack my hips, my shoulders above each other, and then from here, I'm gonna rotate my arm all the way down, and then I'm gonna rotate my arm all the way up. Notice how I'm keeping my elbow tucked into my ribs and my hip the whole time. I'm trying to keep my arm straight in the air as well. So I don't want my arm coming out here or towards my head, but I'm thinking of trying to keep that forearm straight in the air. I'm gonna rotate all the way in again, rotate that arm all the way up, and I'm squeezing that shoulder, back of the shoulder at the top, 
for five nice and controlled reps. You can play around with this one for uh, how much weight you want to use, guys. Remember, we're doing three sets of five on one side and five on the other side. Have fun with this one. Yeah, hopefully you had a good workout uh, today, guys. Um, you hit those 15 rounds or more on your workout. I uh, just want to finish off with that motivation um, talk that we mentioned at the whiteboard and the announcements. Um, we had a, earlier in the week on Sunday, we posted a blog on our YouTube about motivation tips. Remember guys, follow those three tips to help you stay motivated. It's not about motivation at this point, it's really about keeping that routine as best you can. The routine is off, we understand, but stick to a routine. Through being consistent in your routine, you're going to get those results. You're gonna keep up in your, you're gonna keep working on your physical aspect, but more importantly, you're gonna be working on that mental aspect that sometimes we take for granted. That's what CrossFit really builds. Build that resilient mind, build your callus in your mind, rep after rep, workout after workout. Don't start getting too soft and getting too comfortable. Make sure you stay motivated by keeping to a routine of some sort. Again, check in uh, or put your time on the YouTube if that's your motivation. If not, again, follow the blog tips, guys, that we talked about earlier this Sunday. Have a good day. We'll see you guys tomorrow.